you know, I've said to all of you, if you're not prospecting three to five hours a day, you're at risk. And I, and I guess it's falling on deaf ears. And the reason you're not prospecting three to five hours a day is why? We're busy, exactly. <laughs> and you're busy doing what? Stuff. Stuff. stuff, whatever that stuff is. And you can't figure out how to not do that what? Stuff. stuff. Well, I can figure out real easily. Prospect. And then you won't have time for what? Stuff. stuff. And when I looked at it, we did the exercise where you turned in your schedules for a day. And it was so clear to me that what you're doing is you're trying to squeeze your prospecting in. You might have an appointment time for it. However, it's a very loose appointment, meaning anything else that comes up during that time frame, we skip the what? Prospecting. And so if you're not going to commit to this process, if you're not going to commit to having a schedule and following a schedule, you're at great risk in this market. Make no mistake about it. And it's not difficult in any way, shape, or form to follow a schedule. It's truly not. You know, did you do it going to school? Yes or no? Yes. You know, if you ever worked in a corporation, you probably had a schedule that you followed. So all of you know how to do it. And to think, and I know you got into this business because you didn't want a schedule. You didn't want to be accountable. You didn't want a boss. Well, you have to get over that. That's childish thinking. The fact that you think you're going to be your own boss is, is nonsense. It's pure nonsense. And we've now given you an opportunity to check in every morning between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. And there's roughly 10 to 15 people who do it via the conference call or via email. If you're not doing it every day, then there's only one reason, and that is what? Because you're not making your contacts. You need the daily accountability. All the things that we've been preaching and coaching for the last 10 years that you've ignored because the market let you, you can no longer ignore. And anyone who sold real estate during the early to mid 90s, you know, you know that you have to prospect in times like this. The big difference between then and now, at least there's deals now. At least there's business to be done. In the early to mid 90s, there was no such thing as a multiple offer. You were lucky to have any offer. Multiple offers that were a buyer writing offer. First, uh, multiple, exactly. <laughs> That's, uh, he said, back then, a multiple offer was buyers writing multiple offers on different properties <laughs> to see the best deal that they could get. So make no mistake about it. There is still business to be done. As I put out in the email the other day, regardless of all the headlines, the fact of the matter is the headlines don't change the reality that people are still being born, people are still dying, people are still getting married, people are still getting divorced, people are still getting promotions, people are still getting transferred, people are still losing their job. Life continues to go on. And because life is happening every day, people's needs are changing. And as Fred likes to say, everyone lives somewhere. And since change is constant, the possibility exists that every single day someone's real estate need is changing. And that's what you have to tap into. The other big thing that I want to mention to each and every one of you, how many of you have listings? 
However, if they don't want to sell, then they have to stop wasting your time and your money. When you take a listing, you need to be very specific. I have one job to get someone to write an offer on your property or get multiple people to write an offer. And then my job is to work that offer up as high as I can get it, and then your job is what? To sell. To sell. It's not to wait for a better offer. How many of you have experienced price reductions with any of your listings? How many of you are at a price right now with your listing that your seller never could imagine? Right? When they started, they thought, no way would I ever be listed at X. Well, if they keep waiting, it'll be X less 10%. Or X less 15%. And again, it takes a tremendous amount of conviction on your part to have this conversation. And you have to start off by saying, look, believe me, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. I'm trying to help you right now. I'm not working against you. I'm not trying to negotiate with you. I'm trying to help you understand what it is you need to do in order to sell your home right now. And if you're not willing to do this, let's not go through the charade of being on the market. Is Liz here? Can I share our conversation yesterday? You know, she has a seller who is just too high and refuses to come down. And so she wants to go back to that seller and say, here is your listing in a very nice way. However, the seller just wants to be on the market. And I think many of you are in that same situation, just in varying degrees of price. And the problem for all of you, if you keep those listings, is what? Psychologically, in your mind, there's what? No, there's a hope that a miracle might happen, and that listing is taking you away from doing what? Going out and getting another listing, because you think, well, I got one, and maybe it might sell. You know, nature abhors a vacuum. And if, you know, if you want to get new business, you've got to clear out the space to make it, make it happen. So we've got to stop holding on to all these listings where the seller is not fully understanding the reality of this marketplace. It puts enormous pressure on you, correct? Because in the end, whose fault is it? It's yours. You gave them the wrong price, or you weren't tough enough, or you, you led them down this path. And what's interesting, if you look at the numbers, basically we're at a one-to-one -one ratio between listings and sales. And while the market, while it seems like most of the energy in the market is coming from the buy side, you can't fall into that trap. You want to be a top producer, you have to be listing property. 